Hi, this is Todd. Have I reached the right person? Yes, you have. This is Reoffend from London Rocks here. So, how's it going? It's going really well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So, you're in Florida at the moment? Yes, I'm in Florida, and it's very hot outside, so I'm enjoying the air conditioning right now. <laughs> well, a very warm welcome from uh, Camden in London. It's not as hot here, so we don't really need air conditioning. I... I think Camden is an awesome place. I played the Camden Under Underworld. Yeah. I played there with Crimson Glory, and it's a really cool area. I love all the, you know, the kind of the punk scene with the tattoo shops and the people with crazy mohawks, and I love that whole vibe. I absolutely love the atmosphere in Camden. It's amazing. Awesome. Okay, well, let's talk about the upcoming Queensryche album, which is self-titled, and it's due okay. out on the 24th of June by a Century Media. It's mm -hmm. the 12th studio album, and apparently it's back to the heavy metal and more classic sounding side of Queensryche. Um, so how has the album been going so far, and what predictions do you have for how it will be received? Um, well, I, first of all, I would say that... Um, I don't know that it's a heavy metal album per se. It's uh, there are certainly some elements, you know, that are more representative or indicative of the band's kind of roots. Um, but you know, there's a little bit of so far the people that have copies that have listened to it say that they feel that it belongs kind of right after Empire. Um, you know, there's there's some songs that definitely um, are heavier and kind of allow a little more vocal acrobatics, if you will. But um, it was a lot of fun to make. You know, uh, the the guys, everyone contributed a hundred percent with their own creative ideas. I mean, every we we didn't just stick to our own instruments. You know. Um, yeah. Scott, Scott wrote guitar parts. He did um, he did all the orchestrations on the album. I mean, he spent a lot of time composing all that stuff. And Eddie wrote lyrics to a couple songs and helped out with some vocal melodies. Parker wrote lyrics. I wrote some drum parts. I contributed to a, a, some guitar things. Um, so I, I'm hoping that it's going to be received really well. You know, we're really happy about it, and I, I think it feels like a really good, complete record. Um, there, there are some songs that we wanted to get on the album that didn't make it, just because of time constraints, and and those songs needed um, needed a lot more attention, and they weren't really completely finished. So we just thought, you know what, let's just put let's put these on the album, and we can go back and and. Uh, you know, there's always a next record. So actually, as we're speaking, uh, we're writing songs for the next record right now. Already? So, yeah, already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you're very happy that you're in Queens, right? Um, and you were in Crimson Glory before. So how did you go from Crimson Glory to Queens, right? Um, how did it come well, about? You know, I, I met Michael Wilton at... Um, at a NAM the NAM convention in California, which is a really huge music conference. Anyway, I was at a private artist dinner party for a company called Seymour Duncan, and I went up to the to the buffet table to start putting food on my plate, and there was Michael talking with somebody, and we just kind of just started chatting, and um, he had some some music that he was working on for TV. Um, and had another uh, band on the side, and I told him that I was in Crimson Glory, and we, were, you know, he asked what I was doing. I said, "Well, we're working on a new album. You know, it's taking a long time, but you know, that's what I'm doing. And what do you have going on?" And we just kind of just started talking. We didn't know each other before that, and we had we ended up talking for a good hour at dinner, and we exchanged each other's emails and phone numbers. And a couple days later, I got four new songs in my email and I just started working on some stuff with him and he really really liked it and uh, 
In fact, the first song I ever did was, was with Michael was Don't Look Back. And uh, But he introduced me to the guys and said, hey, you know, Jeff is promoting his solo album right now. And he's got dates to tour on that. Queensryche doesn't have hardly – we have just a few shows booked for the whole year. You know, we have mortgages and families and we need to earn money. How about if we put a side band together? We'll call it something totally different. But it'll be all of uh, all of the guys in Queensryche minus Jeff. Yeah. And you know, Todd, I you seem like the perfect guy to do this for with us. Would you be interested? Let me let me talk to Scott and Michael and, or and uh, Scott and Eddie. So initially, the band was going to be called West, which stood for Wilton, Eddie, Scott, and Todd. Okay. And um, we thought, eh, you know. I, I get it, but it doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. It's just kind of west. I don't know. It just and then we started saying, Well, what about corn? I bet if you ever said corn, that probably sounded funny <laughs> in the beginning or you know, yeah. tool. You know, tool. There's band all different kinds of bands. So Eddie came up with how about rising west? Because, you know, this feels like something really fresh for us and we live on the west coast and uh you know, it just it it feels better to say, and then Parker was was going to be a part of it, and it just made sense. So that was really how I met those guys. We already had two shows completely sold out before we even rehearsed one note together. <laughs> so so I flew to Seattle. We had I don't know I think a week of rehearsals before the first show, and it was uh, it went over really really well. Everyone loved it. These guys were having fun playing songs they hadn't played in so many years. And, uh, you know, obviously they weren't getting along with Jeff. There were a lot of problems. Mm. And so I was a fresh face and offered a new perspective on things. So how has the drama been um, with the whole Jeff Tate and the other album, the one that he's brought out? Um, and has it been, is it still fresh after that? Has it been difficult? Um, to be honest, it's not something that we really pay much attention to. I mean, obviously, it's it's everywhere on the internet, so it's it you can't avoid it. You know, there's a trial in November that will determine uh, the name, who gets that, and yeah. uh, I, I feel very confident. Everyone on our side feels very confident that Michael and Scott and Eddie will be awarded the name. And though obviously it'll boil down to whatever kind of corporate contracts are established and put in place and, you know, that kind of a thing. So I'm sure there will have to be some type of financial compensation for whichever side gets it. But, um, you know, yeah. these guys are the majority. They were the songwriters and you know, I, I guess I will quote Scott Rockenfield from a previous interview where he says, you know, for any one person to call themselves the band name is ridiculous. And, uh, you know, I, I know that on his record, he had him and two other writers that aren't even in the band. And those guys that play on that record are not the guys that you see on the stage. So it's it's a group of great musicians that he has joining him, but but that's not Queensryche. Is it? Queens will you be finishing an album with Crimson Glory, or is Queensryche your main concern at the moment? Well, I resigned from Crimson Glory because of the band's inactivity. I just, I just, you know, I just couldn't wait anymore. I was getting really angry and irritated, and um, it just was something that I just had to finally say enough is enough this isn't productive it's not working there's no point in in people keep getting their hopes up for something that's beyond my control I can't write the record by myself so I just I hadn't heard from from John Drenning in almost one year now I wanted to, look I wanted to be a full-time musician and Crimson Glory just did not afford me that and Queensryche, it was a totally different animal. I mean, this was a machine that I'm here, I'm getting phone calls and emails from, from guys in the band every day. 
they're sending me songs constantly we have you know a great label we have a great management we have a great pr team we have a great booking agency now we have all of these really great things that you know everyone is a part of the productivity of the band and it was just professionally and personally it just was a way healthier environment for me to be in and it's it's just been all good you know it's been all good it sounds very positive so Queens yeah, Rock, yeah yeah um queens are playing the o2 academy islington uh, in london on october 12th this year how will london rate in the tour in terms of gigs <laughs> um well you know when when i played uh, camden before it was a it, obviously it's a, a really small venue that we played in but but the energy of the crowd was awesome and um you know i think that because we're playing there after the album's release now that that kind of helps with um the exposure of the band and um getting more people out to the show and you know we're incorporating new songs into the set so by the time we play there you know we'll we'll probably play more more of the new stuff not a lot of it but but we'll interject newer songs into our set um you know i anticipate it to be a great show europe is in general seems to be um they really embrace you know hard rock and heavy metal music and over here in the us you know it's largely hip hop and country and pop and uh, you don't get the the rock or the heavy metal um support um like you do overseas so you know we we're we're anticipating a, a really wonderful night and actually we have um i just talked to scott last night on the phone and we have a lot more dates that are going to be implemented into our touring schedule for october you know hopefully you'll come out to a show and i can meet you and you can meet the guys and it'll be a fun evening yeah that'd be ace uh, especially the the london date i could certainly come to that and meet you guys and maybe Do interview that. you again i I, w I would very much enjoy that yeah that'd be great um, it's so, always it's always cool when you you talk to somebody and you're you you get familiar with their voice and then you finally meet them in person and it's like wow hey yeah we had a great conversation and so I would I would very much like to meet you. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, me too. Good. And um, since since joining Queensrÿche, has there been a moment where you've been like, whoa, this is so rock and roll. This is like the most rock and roll moment ever. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let's see, there are a few of those moments. Um, one of them is, you know, you get off the airplane and uh, some people recognize you and you're in another country and then there's a big stretch limousine waiting for you. And, <laughs> or, or the tour bus picks you up at the airport and there's all these people outside, you know, waiting for their rides. And then here we come, you know, all these long haired guys with all this gear and, you know, so that that's kind of a rock and roll moment. Another moment is um, we well we did a we did a press conference in Mexico, and a lot of times we'll do interviews, but not a press conference. So we walked upstairs, and I don't know, there were fifty or a hundred people up there, and all these cameras, and you just stand there, you feel like just an object, and <laughs> in had, a they had the, yeah, they had the Queen's Reich banner behind us with these nice leather couches and for this press conference and you know you just stand there while all these people are taking all these photographs and and I started laughing and, and I said to Scott like wow this you know it's hard to just stand here and not be laughing because it just feels a little funny and um, and he was laughing too with me and he said yeah it's kind of like an object isn't it and we were kind of kidding around but they're they're all really great and um, so there are those moments, um, you know, we did the Revolver Golden Gods Awards in Los Angeles and you get to walk the black carpet and, you know, we were interviewed by Jack Osborne, Ozzy Osborne's son for, uh, for Fuse TV and, you know, you're among all these people. Next to you is Phil Anselmo and he's doing an interview. Then there's Zach Wilde, there's Marilyn Manson. There's... So to be among that, 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 uh, in, in that environment, 
there are those moments where you're like, holy shit, this is this is full fledged rock rock star shit right here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you know, have to offset these rock star moments by going home and putting your PJs and your bunny slippers on? <laughs> totally. I mean, <laughs> with a hot when cup I come, of cocoa. Yeah, when I when I come home, you know, uh, I go see my mom and I I um, I get in my my car and I I make the rounds and I try to you know my friends will stop by and we'll go have dinner or lunch and it's like a cram course you know it's you're always around people and. Um, on stage, you know, I guess I, I'm okay with that, but in my personal life, I don't really go out much, and I wouldn't say that I'm terribly introverted, but I'm just not a a, a, a big social person in my normal life. Um, so it, it's definitely you know maintaining a balance, and even if I didn't have the amazing friends that I have, I think I have the experience. Um, and I reflect enough on myself to know to still be grounded. You mentioned you've really. mentioned that you're writing um, the next album already. Um, do you have any kind of tidbits of information for London Rocks to tell us? You know what we can expect, or anything exciting that we can take away from the interview today to look forward to. Um. Well, I I think that you know on the next record there might be stuff that's um, a little heavier. Um, and also, um, probably some longer songs. I think that Michael, there was a song that Michael was working on and I think he, he's like, dude, this is going to be a, an eight minute song or something, you know, this is really killer. And I said, well, that's fine with me. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind the next record kind of letting the music, uh, breathe a little bit more in a sense of. You know, today, people really want you to be into the the meat of the song in a relatively short period of time. The days of hearing songs that Pink Floyd wrote or Led Zeppelin wrote or, yeah, look, a lot of the metal bands that, that I've always loved, you know, there's always that long intro and it kind of gets monotonous and it, it loses your attention. I think if we can write longer, a long, it just could be one song, a long song in a very um, creative way, then that would be something that I'm looking forward to. A song like Roads to Madness, that's a 10 minute song, you know, take them on this really long journey for a song would be really great. But um, I guess the next record, you know, I, I remember saying to the guys on the next record, I, w I would like there to be songs that are even heavier than whatever we did on this record. You know, I really want to be able to to, to um, push the threshold as, as far as I can with the heavier side. Um, but certainly there are moments that, that, I, that I love just as much that are not heavy songs, but are just really great songwriting and big orchestras and, you know, song dynamics. So we're just gonna try to outdo this record on the next one and see what we can come up with, you know? It, that's the fun part is, is when you get an idea in your head it's almost materialized in your head before everyone else gets to see it, you know, which a lot of people, like I say, when people ask me, man, aren't you just freaking out that you're the singer of Queensryche? And part of me says, yeah. And a bigger part of me says no, because I've lived this in my mind so many times. Um, it's just now you get to see what I've been seeing in my dreams, you know? Well, thanks so much for chatting to us today, Todd. It's been really very, awesome. You're very welcome. And keep doing what you do. Well, thank you very much. And I, I appreciate your interest and all of the guys in the band um, really appreciate the interest for the interviews and the support. And, you know, I hope that you like the new record. And um, let's, let's try to meet when we get to London. Yes, I'll come to the gig. I'll come and meet up with you. We can do another interview or maybe we could just go for a drink. It'll be cool. That sounds that sounds like a plan. Okay, thanks so much, Todd. You're welcome. See you soon. See you in London. Okay, bye.